a story about tannins. Okay, I will have a word about tannin. Tannin is a kind of general term which is used for tanning agents. Originally, the matters that can be used to stabilize animal skin and convert them onto leather. So there are different tanning agents, of course. Tannins may be the magic bullet. It is the missing link which can strongly bind colorants to fabric. For us, the ability of tannins to be a bridge between cellulose and colorants or protein and colorants is crucial. The tannin compounds are widely distributed in many species of plants. Tannin plants belong to different groups which are sometimes very far from each other. Some tannins are very big molecules, I mean a very high molecular price that in, uh, under some condition they can break, they can hydrolyze small acidic and colorless elements that, that could help to fix the colors on the textile. So, the, all uh, of these tannins we call it hydrolyzable tannins because so that's that's a, a big complex that can be separated in different units these are the hydrolyzable tannins oak chestnut sumac which give pretty beiges or pale yellows as well as a good coat pigment to fix linen aluminum salts on the cotton. In association with iron salts, these tannins give iron galotannins of black color, in reality bluish-gray. Hydrolyzable tannins are further divided into gallic and elegic tannins. The first group, the galotannins, release glucose and gallic acid by hydrolysis at low ambient pH. They are mainly extracted from tara, Cesalpina spinosa, sumac, Ras coriaria, and gallnuts, Quercus infectoria, elagitanins, made from elagic acid glucoses, are one of the components of oak wood, Quercus rubur, Quercus petrea, and Quercus alba, chestnut wood, Castanea sativa, pomegranate, and myrobalan, Terminalia chebur. All tannins show a common feature. They darken in presence of iron salts. Each plant can be easily tested by preparing a de decoction to which a pinch of iron sulfide is added. If the solution blackens, the plant contains tannins. Let me show you a small demo. I will make a double test using iron and titanium salts. First I made leaf prints by hammering. I used oak and peony leaf. Then I dried the prints and developed the prints with 5% iron sulfate solution. The prints turned dark grey or black immediately, indicating the presence of tannin. See the result. Here is the result of a double test with geranium leaves made by Michelle. Leaf prints were treated with titanyl oxalate, see on the top, and iron sulfate solutions on the bottom picture. The other ones, we call it condensable tannins. They are small units that can be linked, which can be linked together in order to make a big structure. So they are small units, uh, linkable together to get molecules with very high molecular weight big sink. So the first group is made is made of several units of a, a small phenolic uh, molecule which is looking like this. This is hydroxyl phenolic group 
and three hydroxyl. And this is uh, alcohol. Um, this is the gallic acid. For example, in uh, the gallnut from the, the, the oak, 10 units of that linked together, like a kind of rose, so in, uh, together. Uh, this is a sugar, and every hydroxyl of the sugar will be grafted with one of these units, so that's the gallic acid here. So they are five, and then a second one could be linked on the one. So it makes a kind of big molecule. So this is in the plant, and this could be separated during the dye operation to make um, small units. So these small units are colorless. They could be a kind of mordant or preparation or ingredient to stabilize colors also. And they strongly react, they react with the ferrous components to get black. These are different. These are small things that can be linked together. So the small things, I will design one. This is a, a kind of flavonoid. You remember my flavonoid like this, but this one is different. Flavonoid type. But uh, uh, actually, actually uh, um, how can I show? I will have this. But there's no carbonyl here. So these units can link together. This is an interesting electrostatic point, and here also. So uh, these uh, little uh, uh, condensable tannin will link together like it is here. So this point will meet with this other one here. And that's very funny because it is generating a kind of polymer. So again here could be same unit you see. So the, the, the small unit by itself is called catechin because the, the main uh, the most important commercial product having that in is a uh, a case from Acacia catechu, so they call it catechin, and it makes a kind of polymer. So I will stop after this one, but it could be a very, very big. Uh, I'm sorry, and so on. So you understand that it, it could be, it, it could turn very, very big, and then the bigger it is, the most stable it is. So if you polymerize those little catechins, they turn more colorful. This is pale beige, and when there are plenty, they can turn to reddish brown, a more a reddish and more stable, uh, because it is like a chain. It is a polymer. And these little units, I will, okay, I will present it here again. So when, at least two of these units, I will design them like that's the gallic acid here, and then I will have a second one here. If this links together with some iron component, ferrous salt, after putting it in contact with the air, it will generate a ferric, so the, fer the iron is here. And has it has oh sorry I will change. It has three linkages in each on each here. And so it's make this is totally occupied, totally saturated, so it is like if it doesn't exist anymore, this is blocked. So you see the this ring to be looking like black, absorbing all the light. So that's the reason we, uh, why this is a tannin black. Also, so 
this molecule has plenty of properties. It is anti-UV, because this molecule can graft on different places, including on these guys. And this, make, this is making catechin galate, so that can organic could graft here, like in the tea, naturally occurring. They are catechin galate, gallocatechin in the tea. So all these two grafted together. So this could react with the other tannin. This could react with the ferrous uh, salt, but also with the aluminum. So um, absorbing quantities of metals, but this could uh, also uh, graft on protein. So that makes the landscape extremely interesting because uh, <clears throat> Because it is grafting in protein, it could be at the interface in between wool or silk and color. But it's also a tanning agent. So if ever you have some treatment of some fabric with milk or with uh, hide glue or anything which is collagen-like, the tannin will fix that and make a kind of synthetic leather inside of the fabric. But this is also um, um, easy to link with uh, uh, diff different other molecules. So regarding the medicine, this could be used against poison. What type of poison? Could be metallic poison. So if by terrible mistake some person or child is consuming some metallic thing, you can give the very strong tea uh, before the, uh, the, the doctor arrive. Or um, also, that's very interesting, uh, this could be also um, good uh, protection against um, alkaloid. Alkaloid, they are serious poison having nitrogen. So because it binds on proteins, it also binds on nitrogen components. So imagine you, by mistake, some say somebody is eating a huge poison. So uh, you can give the strong tea before the doctor arrives and you might save the person. That's very important. Regarding the, the uses um, in the dye activity, there are many. So I would like to present you some traditional uh, dyes from different parts of the world using either this type of tannin, hydrolyzable, or this type of, type of tannin. Most of the time these are used to bind the mordant and these are used to generate a color which is kind of reddish brown. So now I will prepare everything to show you uh, different fabrics of the world.